Hello folks, there I am at Quarry View, Quarry View in Portland, Connecticut. It's one of my favorite spots since I moved up here. Right now I'm on the uh, grounding path, also known as the Peace Trail, which is just recently created. And uh, we're looking out at the Adventure Park part of these old abandoned quarries. They say the water, the depth of the water is up to 90 feet. Further on you see there's places you can zip line and jump off cliffs and everything, it's really cool. But the real focus of this video is about Quarry View. This is a sculpture park, kind of a nature, spiritual retreat uh, that was built by some friends I met here, uh, Dean and Darlene. As you see, they've there's a lot of tools from the days of querying, bottles as well. And uh, what's the deal with all these brown stones? Well, this is brownstone, which of course, <laughs> if anybody knows anything about New York and Brooklyn especially, those fancy brownstone townhouses, which are very desirable now to rent, are, are basically built from the quarry, built from this quarry. As you can see, it's a very, very beautiful place. I'll talk more about this history and stuff as we go, proceed down the Peace Trail. Over there is one of the little circle amphitheaters he's made. <coughs> and, uh, on twice a week throughout the warm weather, even, even through the uh, brisk fall weather, there's drum circles that are held here, which I'll tell you about more later. And when it gets a little cool in the back, the main circle, yeah, the drum circles are held here up front. beat the view huh that's the bridge over to a little town in the distance let me watch my step here so How did I discover this place? Well, I wandered here kind of on a whim uh, last summer. I'm always looking for new places to discover, hike, and especially places of historical interest. And uh, I kind of searched on Google, found this place, came down, and, and it was just lovely. I met uh, Dean and Darlene, the owners of this place, and we, we hit it off, and he told me all about his vision. And uh, I've been occasionally coming here for the drum circles off and on uh, since that, that, that day. What's really amazing, and I'll have Dean tell you about that later, is when he got this place, I guess, I'm not sure where, I think it was around two, the year 2000, this place was a junk heap. There was crap that was thrown off the edges and there was, I don't know how much, 10, 20 feet of dirt and rub all over the place. And he's transformed it into this lovely nature preserve, almost spiritual retreat. I'll take you over here for a second. Sometimes he pumps water here. It's a little bit of a lake fountain. So this part over here is an adventure park and that's a separate commercial entity. Uh, the core view is basically uh, from the Peace Trail, which I've just came back on, back to the edge here. 
This is the part that Dean and Darlene have transformed. During the quarry's heyday, which was around in the 1850s, the quarries here employed over 1,500 people and more than 25 ships transported stone from the nearby Connecticut River to cities across the United States, even to Canada in, in England. Sadly, in 1936, a catastrophic flood and then a hurricane in 1948, excuse me, 1938, flooded the place and the quarries were abandoned. The uh, town bought it sometime around the year 2000 and uh, and slowly it's been transformed into what it is now. There I am with Dean, one of the uh, co-owners of Core Review, and he's agreed for me to ask him a few questions and it's gonna be impromptu. So uh, you get a little uh, history from him and also uh, a lot of, of his vision and how, how wonderful it is. So my first question is, um, what was this place like when you first got it? Well, I think that's why we picked this spot right here. This was actually, um, when we came in here, it took us two hours to basically walk to this spot where we're at from the road. And it was literally a jungle. The only cleared area was way up front where the driveway was. Mm -hmm. and immediately at the bottom of the driveway, there was some brush that started to grow. But what we call Jurassic Park, halfway <laughs> down here, this was um, probably nobody can back here for at least, well, it's been closed for 80 years. And I believe that nobody came back here for at least uh, 40 or 50 years. So uh, the gentleman that worked here in 1992, to uh, 2012, um, he uh, never stepped foot in this back section of the property. So he was here for 20 years and never. Yeah, got he was still it. quarrying stone, right? He was cutting stone. Yes. Cutting stone. He rented the property from the lady who lived up on top. Okay. And then he worked. He always wanted to come back here to expand his operation, but the town wouldn't let him do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so my next question is. Um, I know uh, you had this property since, when was that? Uh, 2019. When did you start the drone circles? So I think it yeah, would have been uh, the year after. Be uh, let's see, 2019, we came back in September, October. Yeah, I think it was the year after. Mm -hmm. um, because that particular year, uh, yeah, because winter was coming. So we got, we owned the property for at least six months before we made it back here. That's how bad <laughs> it was. So then once we came back here, it was the process of removing all the garbage and stuff that we found. And uh, so one of my videos on my Facebook page, when I looked at it first, my impression was, was you know, you hear me say, it's going to take me two years to clean it. <laughs> Obviously didn't, but it was uh, pretty bad. So there was like... How much, like a couple of feet or more of well, rubble? Well, up against the wall where it was close to where the people from up above, uh, it was it was hard to tell because the garbage was piled up and then debris would fall on top of it, it would compost. Um, so as you dug into it, it was just nothing but garbage. Um, literally, people would throw stuff off. Oh, yes. Right? Uh, yeah. So uh, we're not going to talk about what was there because <laughs> some of those people are still around and they're, they're not happy about it. But... Uh, the thing was is that the remarkable thing is the actual quarry at one time, the town literally considered purchasing it and filling it with garbage and making a dump out of it. Oh, wow. So I couldn't even imagine that. And the stories I've heard when uh, people that were in the area that had businesses, they would just pull up and they would unload their garbage and would just go in the water. And... Um, so a lot of that stuff landed on our property. We had a lot of tires, milk crates, and shopping carts, and furniture, and and we still have the motorcycle that we saved. Um, yeah, that just recently got moved up for display. Yeah, I was... didn't want to touch it. I left it in the same spot that it was when we first came here, but um, as we were cleaning up and everything else, it was getting lost in the debris, 
and uh, I felt that it was more of a trophy for than anything else. So I now I have it on display. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, so there's been a lot going on here besides the drum circles. I know there's been a mo movie. Uh, you have a craft fair, even yeah. wedding ceremonies. Can I so talk the, a little bit about that? The uh, <coughs> weddings. So COVID actually for us probably helped us. Um, most businesses would have suffered during COVID and probably my business would have too. I quit my job when we bought this property. Uh, we just saw something here, it took me over and decided that I was going to clean it and I knew it was going to take me years to do it and I figured it was going to be a full-time job, which it is. Um, COVID, what it did for us was uh, nobody could travel at the time, so there was an app on the phone that you could get hip camp, and all of a sudden, I just signed up for it, and we had people starting to come in every week, you know, and... Uh, As campers? Because, or... Yep, because they had nowhere to okay. go. Uh -huh. um, people are traveling out of state, couldn't go to campgrounds, so uh, we were able to bring a couple in at a time, and mm -hmm. everybody was separated, and from there... We still keep it light. We like to have just uh, to give people experience of the quarry. We feel that you're camping in a museum. And that's um, really the goal here is not to fill it with a bunch of people to preserve what's here. So uh, that, w that was a big help. And then uh, the Netflix filming uh, was right here on this patio. Um, now, what is, what is that film about? You know, that's uh, Stephen be... King's, it's based on Stephen King's book, uh, Mr. Harrigan's Phone. Okay. So uh, it's going to be a series on Netflix. So uh, we had a, a location manager uh, locate the spot for the scene that they needed. And it had to be in a quarry. And I think what happened here was um, we won over any other quarry because we had no graffiti. So that was yeah. the graffiti in the other quarries would date the time for them. It would make an issue. So um, it worked out good. It was good for us. Um, we have the nonprofit, so we uh, decided to have the uh, nonprofit benefit from the filming. So that's how the building got started up front. So yeah, the, the, I, I'll explain. There's a building up front that he, he's putting together. It's going to have restrooms and things like that. I know uh, your one of your main goals is to be, in, be kind of a spiritual retreat, and you, you, I think I think you've had instances of you think you really helped people out, uh, just overcoming you know, personal issues and things like that. Yeah, right? and I think, um, truthfully, we don't know what our path was. We got thrown into this. It's a learning curve. We, um, everything that happens is by uh, fate or a uh, result of another thing. You meet somebody, you talk to somebody, this happens and somebody else talks to you and that happens and um, we feel that the quarry itself has to be preserved and we will do everything possible to keep the natural every stone that was placed from the workers in the 1800s and stuff like that we will not allow to be touched drilled or anything for profit so um, we have additional stones we put in just for safety, but that's it. So we're really um, on a daily basis. If we see something, we make a change or something, we're trying to let some of the trees grow back in, especially this path here, which is part of the, um, the peace trail. We, um, this was our original pathway when we walked down here, when we came to see this property. Mm. So we want this to grow back to represent, you know, what we walked on originally. But Not quite. This is what you want. No, no. The side, right? but, but the thing yeah. is, what it does do is that it starts from the beginning of the property. And then if we did have campers or we did have other guests here, it's a designated right away where you feel natural that you could walk down right. through everything and you could stop at a different patio, a location. Um, myself, I think the most spectacular time to be here is in the rain. I'll tell everybody that. Yeah, I, I was meant to, meant to say that all you posted videos, there, the, there's an area over there where there's a waterfall, but it only occurs after a rain. Exactly. Correct? It's the uh, drainage from this town. Uh -huh. um, but the harder it rains, the more magnificent it is. Uh, even back here in the drum circle area, uh -huh. there's a parking lot. There's a catch basin up there. 
it dumps down and there's an easement where they allow the drop the water. But for us, it makes a nice um, spot for it to drop. Yeah. Oh, you're hearing the uh, sound of the drum starting. Soon there'll be a pretty uh, um, robust drum section starting. But I do have one more, more question for you. It's, it's really concerning uh, your long-term vision. Uh, one thing I've noticed since I've coming, been coming here off and on for almost a year is it, it keeps getting transformed. I mean, you move things around, or I call it up front, there's a stone hedge, and, and uh, I think that's part of the fun you have, but I think also you have a long-term vision. Well, what happens is um, some of the stuff is that happens is that you you build it, but you do it as out of convenience and you're trying to save money. And then as you come back, you say, okay, how can I make it better? And um, you relook at the thing. You know, and then you have people that donate plants. Uh, opportunity happens. You know, like the sand. Uh, this path probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't right away because, um, you know, the Butler Construction donated the sand to us. So, uh, which was good because I've been buying material from them for three years and never thought to ask them for anything. But when I did ask them for the sand, they stepped right up and offered yeah, it. That's, that's great. So that was really nice. So we do all the work and, you know, we have no problem doing the work. It's just the money that is tight. Yeah. So long-term plan, we feel that we're on the plan. We're following a path. Uh, it's the preservation of the shoreline, which I feel is where all the historic stuff is. Sometimes things change because we find something in the ground. <laughs> we find something like, for instance, the steam donkey location, the exhibit that's up there in the middle. That's something that's not in the record books. Um, nobody knew about it. So now we found it. We made an exhibit out of it. Someday we're going to replace the boiler. You know, we're going to locate one and we're going to put it back in place. I'd like to make a demonstration. As well as one of the derrick locations, we're going to do a uh, rebuild an operating uh, derrick up above. So um, for the state of Connecticut, this was like the most important quarry in the country. Oh, yeah. And um, for us to be able to rebuild something to show, I think it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. I, I appreciate you taking the time to tell me a little bit about the history of this place as well as your vision. And, and I think a lot of folks will be really pleased to, to thank see Thank you. This. Well, you know, I almost forgot about the, the flute part of this forest of flute chat. But I uh, got a nice setup here with the wall of the, the main quarry getting hit by sunlight. I play a little on one of my favorite flutes, the uh, G minor red cedar flute. Here in the background, that's the drum circle I was starting. So, you got a real background.